Hi, I'm Caitlin, and I'm going to tell you about the Sharpless Asymmetric Amino Hydroxylation Reaction today. We're going to learn some fun things, and um, so some history and background on this reaction. It was discovered by Carl Barry Sharpless. He is actually a Nobel Prize winner in chemistry. He was awarded the award in 2001, and he also discovered two other important asymmetric reactions, but we're going to focus on the amino hydroxylation one today. Okay, so in this reaction, we our starting materials are alkenes and we have an alcohol group and an amine added sin with each other to that alkene. Common reagents used in this reaction are salts, and the source of salt is usually a nitrogen halogenated, either sulfonamide, carbamate, or mid. And the important thing is that it's a halogen, so it's a good leaving group, and you'll see why later when we go over the mechanism. And we also have osmium tetroxide, which will act as a catalyst for the reaction. And then the anti-selectivity is achieved by chiral ligands. So when we're looking at the chiral ligands, these are two common ones that are used in the asymmetric amino hydroxylation. And so this one here, DHQ2PHAL, the PHAL corresponds to the center group, the DHQ is these two large groups out here. And if we look at the stereochemistry of these two groups, we see that they're actually blocking the beta phase, so the beta phase that's coming, the phase that's coming out of the cord. And then this will force the reactions to add the new groups to the alpha phase. Where in contrast to that, this is a chiral ligand that's used to block the alpha phase because these two large groups here are blocking the alpha antiotopic phase. So then it forces the new groups to then add on the beta phase. So this is how the antioselectivity is achieved through this reaction by these large chiral ligands that will either block the either beta or alpha phase depending on what is desired. So now that we've talked about it in general, kind of what the amino hydroxylation is, the asymmetric amino hydroxylation, we're gonna look at it that when it was employed in a total synthesis. So we're looking at a total synthesis of this big macromolecule, cyclomerine C. But so way in the beginning of the synthesis, we're starting with an indole, which has a couple groups off of it, and you can see that we have an alkene. So that's our starting material for the amino hydroxylation. We can look at the reagents and see some that we talked about earlier, where we have our salt, which is nitrogen with our chlorine, which is a good leaving group, and then CBZ is just a protecting group. Then this is gonna be our source of the osmium tetroxide catalyst that we had talked about earlier, and then this is our chiral ligand. And so if we think back, it's kind of hard to remember exactly which one blocks the beta phase and the alpha phase, so this one actually blocks the alpha phase. I'll just remind you. So then if this is blocking the alpha phase, this is what determines the stereochemistry of the final product. So if it's blocking the alpha phase, that means that the alcohol group and the new amine group have to add to the beta phase, which is what we see in the product over here with these two groups now found where that alkene was in the starting material and they're sin with each other and they did add to the beta phase because the alpha phase was blocked by that chiral ligand. Now, so if we break down the mechanism a little bit, there's a couple things going on. But so we have broken down into steps to kind of look at look at it, not, not at everything at once. And so the first step, we're gonna look at generating the amido trioxide osmium intermediate, which is this right here, which is a key portion of this um, mechanism. Actually, this mechanism can be drawn a multitude of ways. Um, sometimes it's a catalytic cycle. But so ultimately what happens is that this gets regenerated. So just remember that, that this gets regenerated at the end. So we start with our osmium tetroxide source. We lose two moles of potassium hydroxide in water to get this intermediate. And our osmium has a lone pair. And we also have our salt source come in and the sodium dissociates from the nitrogen. And so we end up with a negatively charged nitrogen. And remember, we have our good leaving group here. So these electrons will come in and kick off this chlorine and form a double bond between the nitrogen and the osmium. And this is the key emido triox, so osmium intermediate, that then goes down into our second step, second portion of the mechanism, which is generating the osmium azoglycolate intermediate, which is this intermediate right here. So we take this intermediate and we bring in our chiral ligand and the ligand will coordinate with this osmium. And then the next step is, is our alkene from our starting material will come in and there will, it will undergo a 3-2 cycloaddition to form this five-membered ring. And so we have our R and R prime groups. And just for simplicity, I um, shorthanded them. So the R group is the carbomethoxy group, which is 
here, and then the R prime group is the indole. And so we're just using the R and R prime in the mechanism rather than drawing out the entire compound. So then from, this is our osmium azoglycolate intermediate. Then our salt actually comes back in with our sodium dissociated and our negatively charged nitrogen. And then it will undergo a similar step that we saw up here and forms a double bond with the osmium. And our ligand is still coordinated and we still have this five-membered ring, so there's a lot going on. So then the next step is hydrolysis. And that will actually release the key imido trioxide osmium intermediate and then also our compound, our, our product. So and we can see that the stereochemistry between the alcohol group and the amine group is syn, and just like we had spoke about before, it's added to the beta phase because their chiral ligand blocked their alpha, the alpha antiotopic phase. Now, if we look back originally at this big macromolecule that they're trying to synthesize in the total synthesis of this publication, we can look back and find where these new stereogenic centers are. And if we find this indole, it's kind of an easy way to pinpoint it, we know that it's by the indole. And we can look here and see that we have our OH and our amine. Our amine has lost its protecting, protecting group and has formed a few other things. And the stereochemistry has inverted because it's undergone a few other reactions to get this macromolecule. But the important part is, is that they're still syn with each other. And that was achieved way in the beginning because of the Sharpless asymmetric amino hydroxylation reaction. So if you ever need to add an amine group and an alcohol group syn to each other, now you know how.